I'm Any New Province, and this week we're playing M. Lovebo's Ristic Tron for Net Benefits, the series where we explore the benefits of net decking in Popper. Ristic Tron is one of the only Popper decks that can feel like other formats' typical prison decks. Because our format is so fast and low to the ground, it takes great players like M. Lovebo to do so well with a deck like Ristic Tron in the Popper Challenge. So, congratulations for your finish, and thank you so much for the awesome deck list. I'm going to start breaking it down by talking about our fog effects first. We have Ristic Circle, which is the namesake card of this deck. It costs two white white for an enchantment and has a crazy effect. You can pay one, and at that point any player may pay one. If no one does, the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. Basically what this means is, if you have more mana than your opponent, you can keep targeting that source of damage with your Ristic Circle. They can't pay one enough times to get around the massive amounts of mana you're making with your Tron lands, and eventually that source of damage gets fogged out. We're also running another powerful white fog effect, it's Prismatic Strands. It costs two and a white for an instant that says, prevent all damage that sources of the color of your choice would deal this turn. It also has Flashback, which means you can cast it out of your graveyard by tapping an untapped white creature you control. Not only is this Flashback cost criminally cheap, Prismatic Strands is just an awesome card to be playing in the popper format. Most of your opponents are going to be on monocolored strategies, or the threats you care about might only be of a single color. Next I'm going to talk about the cards we're playing that you typically see in any Tron deck. First we have Chromatic Star. Chromatic Star costs 1 generic mana for an artifact that you can pay 1, tap, and sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color. When it goes to the graveyard you get to draw a card. Chromatic Star not only helps you fix your mana, but it keeps those cards flowing. We're digging to our fogs all the time, so we need something to help us dig deeper than our draw step. Of course we're also running Expedition Map as another 4 functional copies of a Tron land. It costs 1 mana for an artifact that you pay to, tap, and sacrifice to search your library for a land card. You reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And of course we have the token Tron finisher Ulamog's Crusher. It costs 8 generic mana for an 8-8 Eldrazi with Annihilator 2, which means whenever it attacks, defending player sacrifices 2 permanents. Ulamog's Crusher has to attack every combat if able, but we're probably going to do that anyway. The rest of this deck is all about value. I'm going to talk about the evasive creatures with value ability stapled onto them first. We've got Mole Drifter, one of the best commons ever printed. It costs 4 and a blue for a 2-2 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw 2 cards. You can also pay 2 and a blue to evoke it, which means when you cast it, you have to sacrifice it after it enters the battlefield, but you still get to draw the 2 cards. Next we have Custody Squire, which costs 4 and a white for a 3-3 flyer, and it has the Will of the Council ability, which means when Custody Squire enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player votes for an artifact, creature, or enchantment card in your graveyard. Return each card with the most votes or tied for the most votes to your hand. Custody Squire does a bunch of sweet things for this deck. First of all, if you evoke a Muldrifter in the early game just to draw two cards, you can buy it back with your Custody Squire and keep drawing. Better yet, if our opponents want to interact with our Ristic Circle while it's on the stack or destroy it after it hits the battlefield, Custody Squire buys that back too. And if you want to go to Magical Christmas Land Value Town, you can also pick up your Custody Squires with your Core Skyfishers. Core Skyfisher costs one and a white for a 2-3 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you can return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. That's great with our Custody Squire and our Mull Drifter, but it's even better with the next few cards. One of the best Core Skyfisher targets there is is Thraven Inspector. It costs one white for a 1-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you investigate, which means you make a clue token that you can tap and sacrifice to draw a card. We've also got Prophetic Prism, another great Core Skyfisher target. It's a two-mana artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. That's almost good enough as it is, but you can also pay one, tap it, and add one mana of any color. Tron generally struggles with its colored mana because it runs a ton of colorless lands, the Tron lands, Prophetic Prism and Chromatic Star couple together to make sure we can hit our colored spells on time. Our last non-land card is a good one, it's Palace Sentinels. It costs 3 and a white for a 2-4, and when it enters the battlefield you become the monarch, which means you get an emblem that says you're the monarch that lets you draw an extra card on each of your end steps. The way monarch works is, if somebody who isn't the monarch attacks and hits somebody that is the monarch with one of their creatures, they steal the monarchy. We're really good at preventing this with all of our fog effects, so hopefully we'll be drawing a lot more extra cards than our opponents. Alright, let's have a look at this mana base. First we've got our blue-white Karu, Azorius Chancery. When it enters the battlefield you have to return a land you control to your hand, and when it becomes untapped it adds blue and white. We've also got a Quicksand, another one of to tutor up with our expedition map. It enters the battlefield untapped, adds a colorless, and you can tap it and sacrifice it to give target attacking creature without flying minus one, 
minus two until end of turn. Our last non-tron, non-basic lands are a secluded step. It's a white cycling land, which means while it's in your hand, you can pay a white, discard it, and draw a new card. We're also running two standard popper duels in blue and white. They're tranquil cloves. They enter the battlefield tapped, they gain you a life, and when they become untapped, they add blue or white. Finally, we have four basic planes and our tron lands. Now, the way these work is you're trying to get one of each on the battlefield, because if you have one of each, Urza's mind starts adding two colorless instead of one, Urza's power plant adds two colorless instead of one, and Urza's tower adds three colorless. All right, let's have a look at this sideboard. First, we've got three circle of protection blue, and Moto decided to put a fourth one in there for some reason. Anyway, we have three circle of protection blue, two circle of protection green, and a circle of protection red. The way these work is you can pay one and target something that is the color of the circle of protection. If you do, it gets an effect, which means it can't deal combat damage to you that turn. We have three coalition honor guards for our opponent having to target it with all of their auras, pump spells, or burn spells. We've got a rest for the weary, some more life gain against burn. We've got three catch all removal spells and journey to nowhere and two relic of progenitus to stop those other Tron decks and blue black control decks. And there it is, Ristic Tron by M. Lovebow. We're going to take this deck live into a league at twitch.tv slash any new province where they're every Monday night playing competitive popper decks. Before I go, I just want to remind you that you can like the video or subscribe to the channel down below. I'd seriously appreciate it. It's a great way to let me know you've enjoyed everything and it really encourages me to keep making great popper content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech and hopefully I'll see you on Monday night.